Hello students, welcome to this new video on experiment number 12. In the last video, we have seen experiment number 11, which is on BCD to 7 segment decoder, how it is to be used for conversion of BCD number into the uh, uh, 7 segment LED display. Now here in this week or in this video, we are going to see the experiment number 12 which is based on implementation of SR flip-flop on breadboard using basic gates. So we are going to see the design of the uh, SR flip-flop circuitry on a breadboard using basic NAND gates. Then study of SR, JK, D and T flip-flop using this DTK board which is ready to use board means actually the circuit is within this board and the pins connections are brought it out over here which can be used with our main board which we have seen in a digital lab practicals. So now for this SR flip-flop basic uh, logic we will see this till date whatever the digital circuits we have designed those are called as a combinatorial circuits. Why these are called as a combinational circuits? Because whatever the circuit we have designed those circuits output was dependent on the current inputs to the circuit. So depending on this set of inputs, you are going to get this set of outputs. What are the BCD to 7 segment decoder circuit we have designed? Based on BCD input, we have a A, B, C, D, E, F, G outputs. So this is fixed. But in flip-flops, whatever the current output is there, that is again fed back as an input to the digital circuit. So whenever the a new set of inputs is given, the output is not only dependent on that current input but it also depends on what was the previous output. So that is called as a sequential circuits. So that is a free flop. Now for giving it a feedback to the digital circuitry and for remembering what was the previous output, we need a memory element. Now in this block you can see over here the memory element is there. So whatever the previous output is there, that has been fed back and for the next state logic, Depending on that, the, you will get the next output for the circuit. So, there are two types of sequential circuits, asynchronous and synchronous uh, sequential circuits. For this practical, we limit our discussion to the synchronous circuits, where a clock is there, which is used for the changing the state of the circuit or changing the output of the circuit. Now, here in this block diagram, a memory element is involved. So we will see what is the use of this memory and how it is implemented. Now if this simple circuit if we implement it on our breadboard, after implementing this circuit on a breadboard using two NAND gates, if we turn on the circuit, we cannot predict that whether the output Q is 1 or Q is 0. Okay. Also we don't have any provision by which we can set the output to 1 or output Q to 0. Now before going for that, uh, we will discuss this circuit. Now how uh, this is called as a memory element. Now if Q is equal to 1 over here, this is given as an input to the NAND gate J2. So here output will be 0. This 0 is given over here. So this output is 1. So we can say that one has been locked over here in this circuit. And if we consider this is one, then we are going to get Q bar as a zero. If we consider this Q as a zero, then here it is zero. So here it is one. So here it is input to one. So here you are going to get zero. So again here is zero, here is one. So we can say this circuit has locked zero. So, 0 has been saved in this memory. So, likewise, when Q is equal to 1, it is called as a, this circuit is in a 1 state, that is set state. When Q is equal to 0, it is called as a reset state or a 0 state. So, if this circuit is in 1 state, or either 1 or 0 state, it continues to remain in that state. There is no provision to change the state of the circuitry. And also, there is no provision of entering the desired information in the circuit. So, for requirement of provision of entering the desired information, so because we want to set 
the q is equal to 1 or q is equal to 0. So for that the additional uh, NAND gates are used over here. This input is called as a set input. This is called as a reset input. Now why it is called as a set and why it is called as a reset that we will see in the discussion over here. Now this is a memory cell with a provision of entering the data in the memory cell. Now if we consider that s is equal to 0 and r is equal to 0. We are going to get when it is 0 0 we are going to get here the output of g3 will be 1 g4 will be 1. So if this is 1 this is 1 the this part of the circuit is exactly same like this circuit because other inputs are over here 1 1. So the feedback from q and q bar depending on that the set or the reset will be locked in the circuit. Now actually if we see that if s is equal to 1 and 0 what happens that we will see. If s is equal to 1 and r is equal to 0. So uh, if we build this circuitry and we set this input as a 1 uh, connect this to the VCC and connect this to the ground and if we turn on the circuit the output of G3 will be 0 over here. Here we are going to 1. Now one of the input to G1 is 0. So by default we are going to get Q is equal to 1 over here. This one is here. Already we got 1 over here. So 1 1 output of this NAND gate is 0. And 0 over here this is 1. So the circuit is in now in a set state. So whenever you want to turn on this circuit as a set state or the Q is equal to 1. You have to connect S is equal to 1 and R is equal to 0. In the similar way, S is equal to 0, R is equal to 1, you can try uh, track it out the circuit outputs, you will get a Q is equal to 0, that is a reset state. Now, this is a set state, this is a reset state. Now, if we have turned on the circuit in a set state, means initially the S is equal to 1, R is equal to 0. So, uh, consider these blue numbers over here. So, initially S is equal to 1, R is equal to 0. So, 0, 1. So, Q is equal to 1 and Q bar is equal to 0. So, currently your circuit is in a set state. After some time, if we have changed this S is equal to 1 to S is equal to 0 and we have not changed R. So, previously the input to the circuit was 1, 0. S is equal to 1, R is equal to 0. Now, we have changed S from VCC to ground. So now S is 0 and R is equal to 0. We will see what happens. And output, previous output is 1. Q is equal to 1 because initially circuit input was 1 and 0. Now this time of, uh, this instant of time we have changed S from 1 to 0. Now if this is 0, we are going to 1 as output of G3. Here is 0, therefore we are going to get 1 over here. Here is 1, output previously was 1 over here. So therefore, here we have a 1 over here as an input to the G2. Now this one, this one, we are going to get an output as a 0. Here the is 0, the output we are going to get as a 1. So if this circuit is in a set state and we are changing the S input or we are changing the SR input from 1 0 to 0 0 the output doesn't changes so the output remains unaltered in the same way if we are if we have started the circuit in reset state means s is equal to 0 and r is equal to 1 therefore we know the q will be 0 and uh, q bar will be 1 so circuit is in a reset state or the memory element has stored q is equal to 0 at that instant of time, if we change R from 1 to 0, means changing SR from 0, 1 to 0, 0, then also you can track it out that the output remains unaltered. So, we have seen three cases over here that we can have a circuit turned on in a set state or a reset state. Okay. If a circuit is in a set state and we change the SR input to 0, 0, the output remains in a state state. If a output is in a reset state and if we change the inputs from SR01 to 00, the output will remain as it is. Now here 
if we make s and r 1 1 in this circuit if we make 1 1 so actually the output here will be 0 and 0 the output q will be 1 and this will be also 1 that is not a uh, assumption that we are uh, considered at the initial state always q bar should be a complement of q so therefore in sr flip flop 1 1 state is prohibited so we have seen that uh, this is a memory element uh, for entering the number or the value that is to be stored this is the provision we have made over here depending on s and r values we can so uh, set or reset the q now here the value that is been set or reset with the help of s and r value is available all the time at the output of these g3 and g4 means if we make change in s or r the respective change will appear over here but if we want to control this output or the decide the decision at which time the q or the output should be affected based on s and r value we can have a provision of a clock the clock the use of the clock is that when clock will be one at that time only the s and r will be having the g3 and g4 output will be dependent on s and r if a clock is zero irrespective of value of s and r we will be having one one over here so if if we consider the yellow color over here if clock is 0 irrespective of s and r we have 1 1 over here so by default the value is been locked into this memory cell now the instance when clock becomes 1 at that time depending on the s and r values the output will change now that we all know that if clock changes to 1 and if s is 1 and r is 0 it is called as a set state so 1 the clock has become 1 so 1 1 0 here it is 1 0 output will be 1 this 0 is there so complement is 1 this 1 is over here 1 1 this is 0 so q will be 1 q bar will be 0 in other case if s is 0 and r is 1 if clock is 0 here it is 1 1 so the information that is locked into the memory cell that is the value of key will be as it is but the instance when the clock is applied the 0 and the clock 1 the output will be 1 over here here output will be 0 so here you will get 1 this 1 over here and this 1 you will get a 0 over here so q will be 0 means if r is 1 q will be 0 means output is reset so the effect of s and r is being taking place only when clock pulse or the clock is 1 so this is the use of clock. the same information is being represented over in this form to table form now q n plus 1 is the output after a clock pulse and q n is a output before the clock pulse so if we are setting s and r 0 0 and if we apply a clock pulse whatever the previous output that will be retained as it is if s is equal to 1 r is equal to 0 output will be set that is 1 q will be 1 if s is equal to 0 r is equal to 1 output will be reset that is 0 and 1 1 is not allowed over here in a sr flip flop but still if we apply s is equal to 1 and r is equal to 1 what happens that we will see so if we will see what happens when s is equal to s and r is equal to 1 ideally the propagation delay of all gates if it is same then for 1 and 1 we are going to get here 0 and 0 so we will get q is equal to 1 and q bar is equal to 1 which is opposite to whatever our assumption that q bar is a complement of q 
So therefore here a question mark is there in our truth table of SR flip flop. But in reality what happens always there will be the difference of propagation delay of each gates. Now here what happens if a propagation delay of G1 is less than G2 that we will see means G2 is faster than G1. So in case of S is equal to 1, R is equal to 1 and at time T is equal to 0 initially here 0 was there clock is not applied at the instant time t is equal to 0 the clock pulse is been applied over here now during this when this clock becomes 1 at that time due to this 1 and 1 the output at time t is equal to 0 onwards g3 output becomes 0 in the same way as 1 and 1 over here at r the output of g4 also becomes 0 but after that at time t1 the clock goes down then it becomes 0 now when clock becomes 0 here also 0 here also 0 at one of the inputs of g3 and g4 therefore both outputs of g3 and g4 are 1 now after at time t is equal to t1 when both the g3 g4 outputs have become 1 so at the time t0 to t1 between this time t0 to t1 what is the output of each gets that we will see as s is 1 over here other input of g3 is 1 over here during this time we are getting 0 over here here also we are getting both the inputs are 1 to g4 therefore output we are getting during this time is 0 as one of the inputs to g1 and g2 are 0 both the outputs are 1 1 so here the output is 1 q is 1 and q bar is 1 so here input to g2 is 1 and here input to g1 is 1 now the instance at time t is equal to 1 when clock goes to 0 at that time the g4 output as one of the input is 0 is going to 1 in a green color it is shown over here now already the q is 1 over here so here is also 1 and here is also 1 this output 1 which is between t0 to t1 time that is also a feedback over here so this is also 1 and this is also 1 due to this clock went to 0 all the inputs to g1 and g2 are 1 but g2 is faster so therefore the g2 is going to make the transition faster so it will become 1 over here so during time t1 to t2 this is becoming 1 over here now the instance this has become 1 over here already 1 is over here so q will become 0 so though s and r are equal to 1 uh, output we are not getting as 1 1 the output we are getting as q is equal to 0 and q bar is equal to 1 due to the propagation delay between these two gates g1 and g2 okay so still means we cannot predict that which gate might be a faster or a slower so this s is equal to 1 and r is equal to 1 is prohibited in case of sr flip flop now there is also one problem with the sr flip flop so the sr flip flop with a clock is been symbolically represented by this symbol with s r as a inputs one clock is a input and q and q bar as a output but we know that there is a problem with this that when s and r are 0 0 and if we turn on the circuit we are not sure whether the q will be 0 or q will be 1 so for this the provision of preset and clear is provided over here now how it works that we will see now when s is equal to 0 and r is equal to 0 initially if we want to set q is equal to 1 so we refer these uh, blue pen colored numbers over here so if s is equal to 0 r is equal to 0 output of g3 and g4 will be 1 and 1 the preset is set to 0 and clear is connected to vcc because we want to preset the flip flop q is equal to 1 means we want to set the flip flop when we power on it 
with s and r is equal to 0. So, preset is 0 over here. Therefore, the output of g1 will be 1. This 1 is fed back over here. Already here we have 1 and already clear is been connected to 1. So, q bar will be 0. So, q is equal to 1, q bar is equal to 0. It is a set state. So, when s and r are 0, 0 and we turn on the ket, at that time due to preset is 0, the q has is equal to 1. But after that, whatever the normal operation we want to use as a SR flip-flop, then this preset should be connected to 1 again. Then this will act as a normal SR flip-flop. In the same way, if we want to uh, reset the flip-flop, when we are turning it on with a S and R is equal to 0, 0, at that time of the clear should be connected to 0 and preset should be connected to 1. Okay. So, therefore, here it is 0. So, therefore, we will get 1 over here. This is 1 is over here. Preset is already 1. Okay. And the output of due to this S here it is 1. So, therefore, this 1, 1, 1, the output is 0. The Q is been reset that is clear at the time of power oning the circuit. So, this same symbol means we can state that once the state of reflop is established asynchronously, why it is called as asynchronously over here? Because there is no effect of clock over here on the output because the preset is zero. So, it itself is forcefully making this G1 output to 1 irrespective of a clock status. So, it is called as a asynchronously. So, preset and clear must be connected to 1 before next clock is applied. So, before next clock is applied means what? After that, once power is turned on and we, you are using the SR flip-flop as per this truth table, at that time, the preset and clear should be connected to 1. It is only for the power on state, whether you want to set the output or reset the output, you have to use the preset and clear. So, this whole circuitry can be represented in a symbol with a symbol like this that is S, R, clock, Q, Q bar. The new additions are preset and clear and this bubble over here indicates that when it is 0, then it is effective means intended operation is performed when the signal applied to preset or clear is low that we know that when preset is 0, Q will be 1. When clear is 0, Q will be 0. So, the truth table we can see over here, the clear is 0, preset is 1. So, the output will be cleared. If clear is 1 and preset is 0, output will be preset. Okay. So, the intended operation of setting is taking place when preset is 0. Intended operation of clear is taking place when uh, clear is 0. So, therefore, it is called as a active low inputs. Okay. So, this is the SR flip-flop truth table. The uncertainty in the last state when S is equal to 1 and R is equal to 1, that can be eliminated by using a JK flip-flop. Now, this is the SR flip-flop. This is same as whatever the circuit we have seen over here. So, this is the SR flip-flop over here with a preset and clear. The additional circuitry over here, uh, AND gate is used over here and the feedback Q bar is been provided over here with the J input and Q with the K input. So, here J Q bar is given as a S input to the SR flip-flop and K Q is given as a R input to the SR flip-flop. Now, we will see what happening over here and how it proceeds. Now, we will consider that when j is equal to 0 and k is equal to 0, what happens that we will, okay. So, now we will follow this uh, pink colored numbers over here. Initially, we want the q output should be 0. So, for q is equal to 0 means clear. So, for clearing or getting the q is equal to 0, when we turn on this circuitry, we have connected CR or the clear to the 0 or the ground and preset is connected to VCC 1. Due to this clear connected to 0, the Q output you are going to, we are going to get 0 and Q bar will be 1 as we have seen above. 
now after that the clear is connected to vcc again okay so now preset is connected to vcc clear is been connected to vcc circuit is on itself so therefore q is equal to 0 and 1 is uh, q bar is equal to 1 now this is the initial state right now in which the flip flop output is there that state we are considering as a qn the current state now we want to see if we connect j and k equal to 0 and if we apply the clock pulse what is happening over here now if j is equal to 0 and k is equal to 0 we can see over here as current state the q is equal to qn is equal to 0 and qn bar is equal to 1 this one is the feedback over here so 1 into 0 and get output you are going to get 0 over here this Q is feedback over here, this 0 and 0, we are going to get here 0. Now both the inputs to S and R are 0, 0. So we have already seen from the SR flip flop that if S is equal to 0 and R is equal to 0, whatever the previous state that will be retained as it is. So we can see here if initially it is 0 and 1, the QN plus 1 after a clock pulse will be 0 and 1 if j and k are equal to 0 0 in the same way you can track if initially it is set and if we turn on the circuit and after that we make j k 0 0 and if you apply the clock pulse there is no change in the output now if j is equal to 1 and k is equal to 0 in the same way we have turned on the circuit the initial state of q n is 0 and q bar is 1 so at that time j and k is equal to 1 0 and we have applied the clock pulse what happens if we apply the clock pulse with j and k is j is 1 and k is 0 we can see over here the q bar is 1 so that is fade back over here so 1 1 we are going to get output 1 over here at the AND gate output this is 0 over here this 0 0 we are going to get 0 over here now we know that when s is 1 and r is equal to 0 so in the same way you can track what is happening with the if a current state output is this and if a clock is applied and if the respective inputs to the jk flip flop what is happening if jk10 the output will be 1 irrespective of whatever the present output if j is 0 k is 1 the output will reset means q will be 0 irrespective of whatever the previous state now we will see directly the 1 1 case now here consider that when the power is turned on to the circuit at that time with the help of clear we have set q is equal to 0 and q bar is equal to 1 and clear is again connected to vcc so that the output is q is equal to 0 and q bar is equal to 1 and j and k are initialized to 1 and the clock is applied at that time we can see over here this 0 q is the feedback over here is a 0 so 0 ended with 1 0 will be here this 1 ended with this 1 the 1 will be here so the sr flip flop is getting 1 and 0 as output so when it is getting s is equal to 1 r is equal to 0 we know that it is a setting the flip flop output so what are the previous output the next output after the clock pulse will be q is equal to 1 and r is equal to 0 means if the current output of the flip flop is 0 and 1 means q is 0 and q bar is 1 if j and k are set to 1 and clock pulse is applied the output is changing to 1 and 0 means q is changing to 1 and q bar is changing to 0 in the same way we can check if initially the output is 1 and 0 at that point of time with jk11 the clock is applied then we can track this one feedback over here so 1 1 you are getting here 1 this 0 over here so here 0 so when s and r sr flip flop the input is 0 s is 0 and r is 1 so r is reset so we are resetting the flip flop output 
so output q will be 0 and q bar will be 1 so before the clock pulse output was 1 q is equal to 1 but after the clock pulse q has become 0 means when j and k are 1 1 the output toggles toggles means if initially it is 0 q after a clock pulse it will change to 1 if it is 1 after a clock pulse it changed to 0 this whole information is been written over here in this table it shows when j and k are 0 0 based on current output what will be the q n plus 1 okay and the inputs to sr flip flop intermediate inputs that are also been shown over here so the final truth table of jk flip flop is that the first three rows are same as sr flip flop only when jk 0 0 the previous output will be retained as it is after a clock pulse if j is 1 k is equal to 0 output is set so q is equal to qn plus 1 is equal to 1 if j is 0 k is 1 qn plus 1 will be 0 but addition is over here if j is equal to 1 and k is equal to 1 if a clock pulse is applied the output is inverted that is whatever the previous output that will be changed if it is 1 it changed to 0 if it is 0 it changed to 1 now whatever the circuit over here we have seen this is nothing but the sr flip flop the addition over here in a jk flip flop is these two additional and gates so if we draw this sr flip flop circuit over here this is our whole circuit over here this is the sr flip flop these are the two and gates additional in jk flip flop now here you can see these two one and gate and nand gate can be combined and it can be used as a 1 3 input NAND gate. It will not make any change over here, but we can use this uh, in place of this 1 AND gate and uh, 1 NAND gate, a 3 input NAND gate. And the feedback over here has been provided to the other remaining third input of the uh, uh, NAND gates. So, this is the final circuit of the JK flip flop by using 4. 3 input NAND gates. The symbol of JK flip flop is similar to that only. So, this circuitry is over here inside. So, this block represents the JK flip flop. Only truth table for JK flip flop is this. Now, we will see what happens because a JK flip flop truth table assumes that uh, for a fourth row, that is j is equal to 1 and k is equal to 1, that input do not change during the clock pulse. Now, what this statement means that we will check. Here we have seen that when j is equal to 1, k is equal to 1, the output toggles. But we have not paid attention over here. What if the clock is uh, it is assumption that the output doesn't changes during the clock is high. Now, what happens that we will see over here with this diagram over here. Now, this is the clock pulse over here. So, this is the clock signal that has been applied over here. Okay. Now, as per our previous discussion, when j is equal to 1, k is equal to 1. Now, here consider that initially q is equal to 0 and q bar is equal to 1. Means the flip flop in a reset state, that is q is equal to 0. At that time, a clock pulse is applied over here with the j is equal to 1 and k is equal to 1. At time t is equal to 0, the clock becomes 1. So, here the clock becomes 1 over here. So, follow this green color over here. Now, the instance when the clock becomes 1, at that time due to j is equal to 1, k is equal to 1 over here, j is equal to 1, this clock is 1. Initially, it is 0 over here and q bar is equal to 1. So, these feedbacks over here is 1 and here is also 1. So, all these three inputs are 1 over here. So, output over here is 0. Okay. So, output, one of the output is 0. So, the output Q becomes 1. Okay. And Q bar becomes 0. So, the output has been changed state from 0 to 1 as per our previous discussion. But still, the clock has not went to 0. The clock is still high. So, therefore, 
this one is still given as a feedback and this zero q bar is given as a feedback to these gates over here and clock is also one over here so therefore g3 and g4 outputs will again change over here so again this clock is one j is one k is one so the output will again change from one to zero so this whole thing is happening within the time span of clock is high so at the end of the clock pulse when clock pulse will become zero it is not sure that what output we are going to get at the output of the flip-flop this means that the jk flip-flop is means the output is toggling with respect to the j and k is equal to one but due to the faster transitions at the output we are not sure what output will be there at the end of the clock pulse end of the clock pulse means clock pulse is clock is becoming zero so this is called as a race around condition so the race around condition is mentioned over here that j k is equal to one q is equal to one then in the same time span the q has been changed to zero within same time span it may happen zero will change to one and it may one will change to zero so actually effectively it may happen that the whatever the initial state of the flip-flop that has been written as it is after the clock is going low so this is not satisfied in that way so the for the duration of tp over here uh, tp of a clock pulse output will oscillate back and forth between zero and one at the end of the clock pulse the value of q is uncertain this situation is called as a race around condition so the race around condition can be avoided by two ways how that is the duration of a clock pulse should be less than propagation delay of the gates so then it may avoid the race around condition or the other is using a master slave flip flop so the master slave jk flip flop avoids the race around condition so what is this master slave jk flip flop this we have already seen that this pink colored box it is nothing a jk flip flop and this green colored box it is a sr flip flop so the jk flip flop is acting as a master and after that a slave that is the sr flip flop is being connected the change over here is that here you can see the not gate over here so the clock is applied through a not gate to the sr flip flop so this whole thing is called as a master slave jk flip flop with this provision what advantage we are getting over here that we will see the race around condition is avoided here the state of the master slave jk flip flop changes at the negative transition of the clock now how at a negative transition of a clock pulse that we will see now initially when the clock goes high here the clock is going high over here during this time the due to the not gate this output the or the this clock is negative over here due to this not gate so the first flip flop is enabled over here and second flip flop is inhibited okay so the qm and qm bar outputs will be given still there is no effect on the output because here the clock is zero after that when this clock make a transition from high to low at that instant of time due to this not gate the clock over here to the slave flip flop that is the sr flip flop makes a transition from low to high and when it becomes high depending on this qm and qm bar the output will make a change or the transition will take place based on the qm and qm bar so the output of the flip flop is changing at the transition of clock so that is the when clock is making a transition from high to low so therefore the so the output is changing at the edge of the clock pulse so therefore it is called as a edge triggered flip flop and the edge is that when the clock is becoming negative or the making a transition from high to low 
so therefore it is called as a negative triggered flip flop negative edge triggered flip flop so the symbol over here you can see already we have seen this whole symbol over here but here at the clock input you can see this triangle this represents the edge triggered flip flop and this bubble indicates that it is a negative edge triggered flip flop negative means when the clock makes a transition from high to low at that time the output changes in the same way we can see the d flip flop now what is the d flip flop in this jk flip flop when the j input is given to the k with the help of inverter means if j if here we will give 0 this here it will be 1 if we give 1 over here it will be 0 means only these two rows are going to be satisfied so here it is 1 and 0 means q will be 1 next step so it is only the delay flip flop it is also called so if it is 1 and 0 you are going to get after clock pulse 1 and 0 as it is okay now so therefore it is called as a delay flip flop the input data appears at the output at the end of clock pulse thus the transfer of data from input to output is delayed and hence the name delay flip flop in the same way the t flip flop is there here no not gate is there so the two rows this first row and last row satisfies with such type of connection over here the rest is a jk flip flop only only the inputs are shorted over here so when t is equal to 0 actually 0 0 row of a jk flip flop truth table is being satisfied okay so 0 0 means whatever the output that will be retained as it is but when t is equal to 1 at that time both j and k are 1 so it acts as a toggling switch for every clock pulse the output q changes from 0 to 1 for the next clock pulse 1 to 0 so this is the end of uh, all the four flip flops we have seen that is the sr jk t and d flip flop now we will see the demonstration video in the next